Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome to the Hanging With Web Show Live. That's right, live right here on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch or other places. I'm not really sure where we're at. I'm I'm in the studio. So welcome to the Hanging With Web Show, guys. I'm GW Pomisher, uh, your host for this evening. And thank you for uh, tuning in to HWWS Web TV. We really appreciate it. Um, real quick, we have a great interview coming up here in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to be joined in the studio by actress and stunt performer and author and adventurer uh patricia tallman will be in the house here in just a few minutes in the meantime i want to get some housekeeping out of the way real quick and let you guys know what's happening thank you guys for tuning in tonight uh make sure you stay here on the page or on the channel throughout the evening uh right after this a little later on this evening we have the kitchen killers 705 live show uh tonight is you pick two night so you got to take the poll for the last couple days and so the boys are going to play the songs that you chose for them to play and i don't know if they're in the kitchen or the studio but one way or another you're going to hear some awesome music so tune in for that uh, a little later on at eight o'clock we have the main event with kevin and mia uh kevin and mia life's observations from the cheap seats so don't miss Mia's top 10 i have no idea what she's counting down tonight it'll be a lot of fun uh and then tonight we're debuting on hwws web tv we're debuting the ginger chronicles live this will be their first live broadcast um and they're doing it from hwws web tv so check them out they're also at eight o'clock so you have to bounce back and forth between kevin and mia and and then the ginger chronicles but you'll you'll have a good time because the ginger chronicles guys are talking about dc and the cw and the snyder cut of justice league and all kinds of awesome stuff and so don't miss out on that tomorrow we've got lights thunder action which is don't miss hwws web tv's very own thunder twins I am going to coin that. It's going to be a hashtag. Hashtag Thunder Twins. Uh, don't miss Thomas Carter Rochester and David Thompson as they dive into all things WandaVision this past week, which will be a lot of fun. And then on Friday, we've got, oh boy, we've got uh, Brian's Anime Adventures. We've got the Kitchen Killers live at 9.05 uh from a kitchen somewhere on planet earth we assume they haven't extended beyond planet earth yet they're still playing in kitchens on earth uh so check out live at 905 with the kitchen killers and willow's pillow talk is an evening with comic creator russell allen um so don't miss any of that stuff we've also got nerd culture's battle of the nerds so check that out uh see who wins this weekend's trivia game which they didn't tell me what it was so maybe that's part of the trivia i have to guess what game they're playing i don't know so uh but so do all of that we want we have a couple of quick uh shout outs we want to do one happy birthday terry mcgyver uh terry mcgyver who is uh one of the hanging with web shows longtime supporters one of hws web tv's social media warriors this man is up at all hours of the night early morning whenever sharing all of this content um and it's terry's birthday but it was terry's birthday because it's after midnight where he is in ireland right now so terry uh, uh, uh we decided that you get two birthdays because you have an international friend base so you get to have two birthdays so tomorrow tell them it's still your birthday because pop pop said so over here at hanging with web show so happy birthday to terry mciver and then our thoughts and our prayers and this is a little more solemn it's not as happy our thoughts and our prayers to all of those people out uh across the west right now who are suffering in freezing conditions from a winter that they didn't anticipate and a power outage that no one could anticipate because these things these images i'm going to show you these are wrong images wrong that these exist on the planet earth first of all i'm from florida where the weather is temperate and this is a site that would scare me to death that's snow on palm trees that's in Texas, guys. That should never, that's at their beach. That's a beach. There should never be snow on palm trees. It's awful. Um, here's another picture. If you turn on the tap and the water comes out and freezes, just this is not a still photo of running water. This is frozen water from the tap. It froze in that position. And then finally, uh, I'm going to show this photo first. I might bring it up after when our guest is online because it, it's worth discussing. <laughs> it really is. This is a terrible sight horrifying sight okay icicles from your ceiling fan which by the way don't want to know where the water came that created icicles on that ceiling fan and then the other picture god i hope that seat is heated somehow because i don't want to sit there ever that is wrong um and but it's real these are real photos guys uh, people are having a really hard time out there so please uh your prayers and if you're living out there in the in, in that area of texas please be kind to one another uh times like this we need all the kindness we can get and all the help we can get we don't get through it unless we're a community so thank you guys uh for listening to me rant for a second um our guest tonight on the hanging with web show uh this is fun for me i not only get to be an interviewer which is awesome by the way 
Um, but I also am a huge fan. So this is really cool. So please welcome to the screen, actress, stunt performer, author, adventurer, just great person. Please welcome Patricia Tallman. Hi. So nice. Hi. What a sweet intro. How are intro. you? I'm Thank good. you. Uh, I, 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 and I mean every word. I am I'm a huge fan and I have been. I grew up as a science fiction fan. And then when I was in my somewhere, I don't know, I was older than I was, but younger than I am. And uh, MB5 came on. And I loved your character and I loved your performances and it was wonderful to see. And I became an instant fan. I went back and watched Night of the Living Dead so that I had reference. And uh, <laughs> because I had known I had known Night of the Living Dead as the as the original Romero film. Right. And I and and so then I I didn't know there was a remake. And then I went and looked and I was like, wait a minute. She, I don't remember her in that. So I went back and saw, it. oh, oh, they remade it. So I had to watch the, the 1990 <laughs> uh, film. Um, so that was awesome. So. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And Thank you. how are you out there? We're, you know, I, I'm, we're, I'm in California. I'm really lucky. So uh, we're okay. We're yeah, okay. That's, a, that's good. That is yeah. really good. I know. Um, it's, 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 you saw those pictures before. Did you see those pictures I just put up? Yes, on? That is just, it's awful. That is, that is, I've never seen anything awful. like that. And, and, and as far south as Texas at that. So if you, if, if you're out there guys and you're, you're not actually concerned about the environment. Look at those pictures. I know exactly. Come on, climate those, change, dude. It's a real thing. Yeah, I mean, there's like it. The climate has changed when there's when there are icicles hanging off of in your bathroom. That's oh. this, this, that's wow. Um, so uh, again, I know she put up a link down below earlier. Uh, so you guys, if you want to, can contribute to uh, helping those folks out because they're losing right. plumbing, they're losing household stuff all over the place uh, as a result of of it just being oh. colder than anybody ever thought that it should ever be. Um, you know, and, and of course the power outage doesn't help. I, I I read earlier they said one of the reasons for the power outage was that the wind turbines on the windmill farms actually no, no, no. yeah but that's not a reason that I was wasn't like, the that's reason crazy. well it wasn't but the it's not reason. A reason no it wasn't a reason at all that's only like 10 percent of anybody's energy is is the wind yeah, yeah. and i'm like but i'm like but i'm like wait a minute that is you're 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 this is a moving object again for those of you that don't know when it gets cold i used to i lived in upstate new york when things are moving they don't tend to freeze it has to be really cold for you to freeze something that's mm -hmm. actually in motion, like water, for instance, out of a faucet. That's crazy. That's <laughs> so anyway, um, so I'm glad that you are doing well. Um, <laughs> how has, I know the past year has been rough on everybody in entertainment, especially. Um, Indeed. Yeah, so, well, um, I had a travel business. <laughs> we were, we were yeah. laughing about that before. So we're just talking about how many people have had to adjust drastically. You know, I mean, whether you're, you've got your kids at home or, you know, um, you've had to rethink how you're going to make a living. All of it is, boy, who would have thought that we were going to be here and be here yeah. for a year plus, you know, it's going to be longer and yeah, we I have to I, I recreate I, ourselves. Yeah, I think I remember telling someone when it first started out, oh, they're going to get a handle on it. And I think, you know, a couple months and everything will be. And then month after month after month after cancellation after a show. And yeah. I was like this is really yeah just an unusual world it would have been in. so helpful had we had the guidance that we should have had you know to stay out of this pit somebody yeah, had taken it on. seriously right away you know and not yeah, yeah it would have, it would have and, been and a different scenario it, it really would have been a different scenario and i and i'm 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 very uh grateful at this point that it looks like we're, we're trying yeah. to do a better job now and yeah. uh and i'm, I'm I'm hoping that it's enough uh, to get us all back to work. May maybe the end of this year, at least next year, please. I want to go back. And <laughs> well, you're, it looks like you're working, dude. Looks like you're. You've been. Yeah, really... I mean, we've had to. Yeah, we've had to make some adjustments. We're online doing right. this now. See, um, I think I had that's to... interesting. I think it's really interesting that you've pivoted so fast, and 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 that's what we've all had to do, whether you wanted to or not, is to to really reshape how you're living because. Yeah. 
you couldn't pay your bills in the way you used to pay your bills. So now what do we yeah. do? And yeah. um, even though, you know, some people were able to, to get a little bit of money from a little bit of help from the government, it wasn't enough. And, and yeah. I, doing what I do, I don't get any of that kind of benefit. So it's, to, it's yeah. like, how do you, how do you stay vibrant? How do you stay um, making money? How do you not fall into the pit of despair and try to stay healthy all at the same time? And you're not getting hugs from your loved ones and you can't go hang out with your friends. I mean, it's been a real challenging time uh, uh, on in a way that that we've never been challenged before. So it's not like you could have worked out those particular muscles before. We yeah. hadn't ever had to, to be in isolation before. So what do you what do you do? And I, I'm really impressed with so many people in my community and the nerd community that have really been creative and come up with new ways to to stay connected and and to stay healthy and to cheer each other on i love that i love seeing yeah no, this everybody being a, so kind to each other it's wonderful this was such a foreign idea uh, to do this on the internet i right. i'm a i'm a classical journalist i was a newspaper reporter before mm. so to do an interview well, I'd always, I, I had somebody in the other chair and we would do a face to face and there was a, the energy of that happening. Right. And, right. and, you know, a couple of years ago, somebody said, you should do interviews via Skype. And all I could think of is, oh, that's going to lose all of the potency yeah. and, the, and, the, and the, the intimacy of it. And, and then COVID happened and, and we pivoted to online because it's the right. only way we can talk to each other. Right. And, but amazingly enough, uh, and I, I feel terribly, terribly blessed because by pivoting into this, I've been able to interview people I wouldn't have been able to. At a, well, I, if I it. saw you at a convention, you're so busy at your table and we're right. so busy at ours, we're not going to get to sit around and, and hang out for That's 10 it. minutes or 30 minutes. Um, so I got to do these. And then the other thing that happened was I actually got to take advantage of slave labor. My son is also not working. So he built my <laughs> set for me, um, which is great. So I was like, hey, I need a version of the set that won't travel. It will just sit in my office the whole time. And he's like, oh, I hate you so much. But right. You know, but we got to hang out and do stuff together, which is really cool. And um, it is. And but I do. I miss. I miss being out there with everybody and and hugging other fans and you know. Well, that's you know. why I did. I started what I did because I didn't. I had. I started a new business in ten days because I knew I could see we weren't going to be traveling anymore. I got stuck in Scotland. I know it's terrible. Oh no, poor me. During the <laughs> lockdown, the lockdown was uh, happened and. Um, my fiance and I were traveling in Scotland, scouting out my next trip that I was going to lead. You know, my nerds and I were going to go hit Scotland and do the whole thing. And all of a sudden, all the hotels are shut, our flights are canceled. And we're like, oh, this is interesting. You know, wow. and we got, got, finally got, got home. And I, I, I could tell by the way things were going that I'm not going to be able to, to lead a trip for a year, maybe two so what do I do? And I miss conventions too. I miss hanging out with people. I miss going to see the fans that they just, they're just bo boy me up. And how do I, how do I create communities? So that's what I did. I started B5 events. I'm going to rename it, but right now it's B5 events. It was quick and easy. It came to mind. And um, I've been doing like what you've been doing. I've been interviewing people from that I would not normally have access to, and I can give that access to the fans. Say, look, we're going to have a couple of hours with this person. Yeah. When does that, that is, ever happen? When do you yeah, ever when does, get, when you that? get that? That experience, right? and then I gotta love this. This the media. This medium has been so interactive because the fans can they can get in the chat, they can ask questions, they can, you know, if I run out of things to say, I'm not worried. We just go to the comments, and I know right. that they've got questions in there, which is awesome. Yeah. So it really is awesome. Uh, she's giving me an evil eye. I think we have okay. to take a, a brief commercial break, and when we come back, we're gonna dive into Pat and remind everybody who she is and what she's done and why you should go to B5 events and meet some of her friends because they're cool. Uh, <laughs> so. Thank All right, we'll be right back on the other side, guys. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. In the summer of 1953, 
private investigator Will Lucky Marks was working as the in-house private eye for Arcane Pacific Pictures. Trapped inside the studio with the killer, Lucky must find the killer before time runs out. Lot 28 Own It Today Available iTunes and Amazon.com this is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Earth Love Show. I want to tell you about my friend at Embellus Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup costumes and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellus Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellus Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Work out on EmbellusEffects.com. And remember, cosplay is for everyone. That's like my favorite ad is Cosplay Michael's ad for embellishing. So effects. cute. I just I just he, love the voice. So cute. He, he 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 had such a good time doing that because uh when they when they said they wanted to add, I said, Well, I don't I don't want to do the embellished effects ad because I'm not a cosplayer. I don't even understand half the things you have. And Michael <laughs> came in and said, I'll do it, Dad. And I'm like, Okay, Aww. we'll go with that. And uh and he had such Aww. a great time reading that and 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 he loves going there. It's like Disney World for him. Right. All of his costume pieces and then they actually, the first time we went in the Bellish Effects, they set up his own personal account. So he goes in and says, Cosplay Michael, and they have it all run up. My credit card is in there or something. And it's, ah. it's, it's dangerous. It's like, I can't let him go there with anybody else because then I won't know what he buys. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> oh <my> uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem with bringing children up on the convention circuit. This is what happens to them. <laughs> I know my son grew up in the convention circuit. He, he grew up at Comic Con. That's it. It yeah. is. It's, an, it's it's a wonderful, wonky, weird world. It's a and... great world. He can, he's got bragging rights for the rest of his life. You know. Oh yeah. He's been to and more Michael San Diego has... Comic Cons than than yeah. Anybody, Michael has photo... Michael has photographs of him and standing next to people that like wouldn't even let me in the same room with them. But Michael's there. Exactly. He's like, Look. I'm yeah, because yeah. no one's gonna mean to a kid, you know. So they get the kids come right up. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> it's cool. Great. <laughs> it's great, um, guys. If you're just tuning in, we're hanging out uh, tonight with actress Pat Patricia Tallman, uh, and um, Pat, you you got your start. Um, actually, it's funny. We have a clip from your first IMDb credit, which is just fun. I don't know why we have this, and you're only in it for like 52 milliseconds. But this is, is ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna introduce. Uh, You've done stunt work and acting, and uh, so here's a clip from uh, 1981 uh, when Patricia got her first uh, IMDb credit here. So here we go. Romance. Heraldry. Pageantry. And magic. I just want to say for all of you would be actors and actors out there, they're like, I'm hanging out for the perfect, perfect part. Uh, the one that pays you because that looked like it was so much fun to do. And it also looks like the most ridiculous film of all times. <laughs> You've not seen it then, have you? I have not seen this particular film. You should uh, be really always... careful how you talk about things you haven't seen. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just, that, that looks like that looks like an incredibly fun. All I could think of when I saw that was a couple of years ago they did a, a another spoof film like that. It was what was it? The Knights of Badassdom with Peter it's, Dinklage. It's you're so off. That's not. Am I really? Oh really, yeah, you are not. so just, off. That's a these, George these are, Romero film. Well. Okay, I uh, you did you, you just and starring I, Ed Harris. See, the, 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 you, these are all great points. I'm just <laughs> I was like I was the 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 teaser. I was saying this is like this is the best just lampooning of of uh, uh, first of all okay. motorcycles and Ren Fair garb are two right. things that I never right. saw in a million years happening in I the same. I understand. Room. Yeah, I get. Yeah. it. I get it. And uh, that yeah. really that really. Did my head in for a minute there, but that was awesome, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, it was, and, uh, I had a wonderful part. I was so lucky to have that be my first role right out of college and to be, you know, co starring well, with all, Ed Harris. And you're, you're co starring with Ed Harris and you're doing a Romero film. So I know. That's like, not, wow. That's not a bad gig right out of the gate. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was pretty good. And to have somebody like George Romero be the, the first film director that I worked with, he was so kind and so gentle and really uh, 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 honoring the actor's process and wanting to, to, to let me bring all the creativity I could to the part. It was just, 
so generous. And I had no idea. I'd never been in front of a camera before. I had gone to an acting conservatory. So we were doing stage work, but I didn't know from film yet at all. Oh, so wow. yeah, that's, that was, yeah. And, and by, by 80, by 81 too, George Romero has, is, is, that's a great name to be putting on your resume because yeah. by then he's established. He that's is. That's right. He's George Romero by then. It's not yeah. like, you know, I think when people did like the first night of the living dead, you heard George Romero and they're like, who? Uh, but now you have 10 years of, of growth. Well, that was 1969. Pandemic. The first yeah. night of the living dead was 1969. And, um, and then by the late 70s, he had done Dawn of the Dead. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember when Day of the Dead was showing up, but somewhere also in there. So... So by uh, 81, he, you were actually, it was the George Romero. It wasn't just you know, yeah. George anymore. It wasn't like, hey, I'm going with this guy, George, and we're going to make a movie. No, no, George Romero at this time. Right, right, right. Years, you know, so, right. Um, so that's got to be a really cool experience. Now, you it said was it amazing. really was, was good with the actors. Yeah. And when you're doing something as fun as, as that looked, mm -hmm. um, is, is there a lot of actor input? Is, was there a lot of actor input at that point for that? Yes, it was an enormously creative um we were it's an ensemble cast and and needing that while ed was the star of course everybody mm. there was so much going on all the time behind everybody that that the that means that the the, the everybody's kind of on camera all the time in behind the scenes you know we're right there with them so it 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 was just a really powerful group of actors to to work with everyone was so invested and creative and George really wanted that to be the life and soul of the of the film because the film is about that it's about a very tight community and what happens in a tight community when something starts to go wrong you know that's, and it that wasn't is. horror so you know it's not it was George Romero but it wasn't horror and I uh, the critics just didn't know what to do with that well it's supposed to be horror it's George Romero and no, no, we're allowed to do different things, you know, in life. I love it. I, you know, like I said, I saw it and it looks it looks funny and it looks like there's a lot going on and it just looks like a lot yeah. of fun to have. Yeah, but it, sure. having having that much fun on camera has got to be a lot of work because it's right. it's on camera. You, I mean, you have to translate yeah. that for your audience. Right. You know, so it's not a comedy. So uh, it comedy's hard. Comedy's hard work. It it was a drama, but there was there's levity to it. There's there's comedy in that with the character development. Some of the characters had that mm -hmm. sort of lighter side and and brought levity to the moment. Um, but it's it's a definitely a drama. That is awesome. Okay, so <laughs> uh, and I know a lot of your your a lot of your fans may the, the the next clip that we have is actually where a lot of fans I know know uh, Pat from, and that is the 1990 remake of um, Night of the Living Dead. And um, what we did here, we had we wanted to have a little fun with this clip because I could only play like 10 or 15 seconds or 30 seconds. Otherwise, the yeah. Facebook. Facebook like throws us off and, you know, sends me nasty grams and things like that. But we wanted to have a little bit of fun with this one because uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about how it was to work on this particular project. So here is uh, the opening, uh, probably the most famous part of Night of the Living Dead. Uh, for those that haven't seen it, um, this is the opening of it. And this we did a side by side, the original and then Pat's so that you could see. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So and again, we only get about. <laughs> What, 20 seconds? So we, do what you can with this, and here you go. You're faster! Jesus, Stop you're it weird. Now. I mean it. Let's just get through this, can we please? Just get it over with. They're coming, coming to, to get, get you, you Barbara. Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Barbara. Stop for the love it! Of you're God, acting Johnny. like a child. They're coming for you. They're horny, Bob. There comes one of them now. They've been dead a long time. Him. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. Johnny. Yeah, well, so that was fun. Done. That was fun to, to put that uh, together. And <laughs> what was great about that was um, you... Uh, in, in that original, they had lines to do all the things that you did with your face. So the, she had, she was saying things like you're childish. And all you had to do was walk away with that look on your face. And we all knew you knew he was childish. Um, oh, it, was it. Just, it. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. it was really, it was really kind of cool to see. And, and we always, uh, when we talk to our filmmakers and things like that, we always talk about the idea that filmmaking has evolved so much. And in just that two decades, um, 
what had to be done with dialogue back in the day with a wider aspect ratio and a, and a you know a good close up on you we could do that without the dialogue so, um so she had to say right outright you're childish for me to get it um mm -hmm. you just walked away and rolled your eyes and were like oh god if he doesn't shut up pretty soon i'm gonna smack him <laughs> I, all i could think to myself was oh that sounded pretty good you're childish dude um so it was really cool to see those side by side it was a lot of fun that um, was really now, fun who did that was that who who put your producer put that together well yeah, done. our producer here in the studio did that so it was oh, a lot of fun we, were gonna, I actually, we played with turning down her volume and and you mm -hmm. know so we could just mm -hmm. see the dynamic but um but we wanted to leave them both up because things that you were doing with your face she was saying out loud and then they would cut to her doing it with her face and you were saying it out loud and i was that's like funny. that's that's just a really bizarre thing to happen that so is. we're gonna stick with it and um but it was great they did a great job with that yeah, so thank you thank you for showing me that so you, great. You, you'd work with you worked with george romero on on night riders and then com comes a few years later you got this is coming up um a, a, right virtually shot for shot but a lot of the action is a little bit different and and it's a uh, uh one in fact a review that i read online which was really good i thought it was really appropriate said that you actually got to bring a, le a level of depth to the character of barbara that she didn't seem to have in the original there it was implied depth whereas you actually got to show it your emotional you you, mm. you played it Really, really emotionally so um tell us a little bit about that process is there any pressure when you're doing a, a like a dead-on remake here you're recreating a character that in horror is beloved i don't know why yeah. it, i've seen the original night of the living dead we actually did a film freaks uh is our version of uh, uh -huh. mst okay and we watch the movies and we make fun of them when we watch them <clears throat> and i was watching that one thinking wow there's so much in this that could that could be done something with and it just is it's a you know it's it it's breaking ground for the first time because I was not a zombie fan back in the day. I learned to be a zombie fan later when I figured out that if you're watching a zombie film, you're actually watching a drama. It took me like forever to figure that out. I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't the think bad, slow. The bad guy in a zombie film isn't the zombie, guys. It's the people. People suck. Um, <laughs> so um, it took me a while to Sometimes get Sometimes they do. Yeah. Well, in, in emergency situations, either the best in us is coming out or the worst in us is coming it out. It seems to be true. Yeah. And and yeah. and when you put it on film like that, it, it usually tends to be there's right. the best of one person versus the nine people in the room who have found their worst selves in that <sighs> moment. Yeah. And it's awful. I, hopefully, ho if I ever end up in an emergency situation and zombies come, I'm hoping to end up with the nine good guys instead of the nine bad guys, because that's that would just work out better. <laughs> I think. If, if yes. It make a very boring movie, but it would be a really good outcome. So I'm. Well, I'm that's okay. what I was. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why. Yeah. They, there a lot so, of that is so for drama. What kind of pressure is there in recreating a, a film that's by then a cult? Classic? I didn't. I didn't. I'm not. I wasn't into horror. I did. I didn't. I don't even know if I had seen the first one yet. I didn't. Um, I didn't feel that kind of pressure at all. I was so lucky because for some reason I didn't take that on, and I. Um, I was. I was really. Uh, at first, not wanting to even do the movie because I thought, well, doesn't Barbara just die? She screams and dies. And, you know, what, uh, like all other women in all other horror movies and these tropes, you know, they're in their underpants, they have sex, they go down to the basement in the middle of the night with a candle that blows out and then they die. Oh, what a surprise, you know? <laughs> I had no desire to do that. But when I finally read the script, Tommy was saying, oh, you got to read the script. George, George changed yes, that's it. That's the wrong one. And, and so I changed it. I mean, I read, I read the see the changes that I was like, oh no, this is now this is a, a much more real character. She, this is a real person in a terrible circumstance. It's just trying to do the best they can, which is, I think, so much more interesting than, than um, having amazing superpowers and just kicking ass and breaking up buildings all over the place. It's so much more interesting to see normal people trying to cope with strange and unusual things happening. So I was excited yeah. to do it, and I just. I just went from it that I was really lucky. I didn't, I didn't have that pressure in my head at all. And I was working with Tony Todd and Tom Tolls and Billy Butler and Bill Mosley, and they were just fantastic actors. So, you know, and Tom Savini was an incredible director. So I, I, I it was a joy. It that was is, a joy to do. That is fantastic. That is it amazing. really was. Yeah. Uh, oh God, are you going to do that again? All do right, what? fine. She holds up the little C in her hand, like, like, 
So oh, commercial. Like, commercial yeah. break? And really? We're just chatting here. Come on. All right. So, guys, we'll be right back. When we come back on the other side, we're going to dive into uh, uh, past later roles. And, the, of course, the one that I know her for uh, the most. And, uh, and you guys will recognize her from her Star Trek work. So, on the other side, we'll talk a little bit about the acting career. And then we're going to get into what she's doing now. So, stay Aww. tuned in and stay logged on. Ooh. And we'll be right back. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? This is KG Bethlehem. I'm an author of a new book called Certain Moments of Time. It's a collection of short stories. These short stories range from post-apocalyptic, dystopian, anti-utopia, as well as general fiction. You can find Certain Moments of Time on sale at Amazon.com, where you can purchase the ebook format as well as paper book format. You can also purchase it at Lulu.com, paper book format, and will be on sale soon at BarnesandNoble.com. What was it you promised your old man? Never give up. Do something they'll never forget. I'm afraid I am a coward. I'm sorry for everything. Meg, this is my moment. You'll be missed. If I had done this a long time ago, a true Movieland tragedy. It would have saved a lot of pain. Peg Entwistle, known for her spectacular Broadway performances and a promising movie career, is gone. We are a touring acoustic duo crashing kitchens around the country. We go from house to house every Friday night and we create music, we create food, we have a good time, we stream it live and we do it for free. So now we're just really kind of like trying to develop it and build a community group that people believe in, then they'll help us. So we played from our rehearsal room, we played from the bathroom, thankfully that didn't catch on. I probably played guitar in my room, not for anyone, in front of anyone, nobody heard, for probably about 10 years. And then one Friday night, we played from the kitchen. It's the main place people want to be. It's where the food is, it's where the drink is, it's where the best lighting is. You can go to any party and I guarantee you, the kitchen is gonna be popping. Our ultimate goal, I think would be to crash kitchens every Friday all around the world. All right, guys, and don't miss the Kitchen Killers tonight, Live 705, uh, the You Pick 2 poll. Uh, they'll be online, so make sure you guys check that out. And uh, I love that commercial break, too, because Hollywood Girl is my brother's film. I'm super proud of him. He did a fantastic job. And uh, so check that out. You can check that out right over at hwswebtv.com. The full film is available, so go ahead and watch it. It's a short. Uh, it is the Hollywood Film Festival's best short drama uh 2018 yeah i i lost track of time because of you know covid the world is closed i can't get out so whatever uh but the last year that the world was open he actually won that award so we're very proud of him so thanks for that welcome back guys we are hanging out with patricia tallman talking about her acting career and all the things she's up to now um to lead in though uh patricia's memoirs are out there you can get them they are the, the, i love this book by the way guys because Aww. this is not just a memoir, but it's a photo memoir. So she shares not only her stories, but pictures to go with them, which is really cool. And, and you get to, you know, kind of feel like you're behind the scenes of Pat's life, which is awesome. But I couldn't talk about the book without first sharing with you. Um, the title of Pat's book is Pleasure Thresholds. And for those of you who are not science fiction fans, leave now, get out. No, I'm kidding. Please stay. We actually do need you to be here. Uh, so stay here. We'll, we'll introduce you to this. So here is uh, from the title of Pat's book. Here is the clip that so many Babylon 5 fans just go around. And I'm sure you're tired of hearing this line, but it's wonderful. So here it is, guys. And then we'll talk to Pat some more on the other side. I am empowered to compensate you quite handsomely for your genetic background. The process would be either a direct mating, you and I, or a donation of vital cells from which we could clone a replicant. The direct mating is far more cost-effective. Now, would you prefer to be conscious or unconscious during the mating? I would prefer conscious, but I don't know what your pleasure threshold is. 
All right. I, I, but by the way, guys, that's an abridged <laughs> version of that scene. <clears throat> um, it's also, if you guys want to go out and grab Pat's memoirs, it's one of the first stories she tells uh, in the memoirs. So you can actually, you know, kind of get a feel for that scene and as being, if I'm not mistaken, that was your audition scene. Yes, I did. It was, uh, uh, it was one of my audition scenes. It was when we got called back to, to it, we, it was the second round, Andreas and I read that scene together for the suits at Warner Brothers. And, and that's, um, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's something else, isn't he? Oh, so wow. that's, yeah, obviously that's why I use pleasure thresholds for the, for the book. Uh, also, cause by the end of the series, um, Lita and Jakar go off together mm -hmm. and previous to us leaving together, I come to his quarters and I say, remember five years ago when you asked me about my pleasure <laughs> thresholds, uh, I just found out I don't have one. And I walk yeah. out of the room and he's just like, <sighs> yeah, which is great because we just spent five years getting to know that the character that Andreas created Jakar um, has a thing for human girls. <laughs> Yeah, so at over five years, we get to see him in all manner of state of different under uh, the prosthetics. People must have been crazy because every time he turned around, he had his shirt off and he still had to have the non right. upper oh, body. He was, and he was just he's he was just the best. All the women on the set loved Jakar and he was always smoking his cigarettes on his breaks outside the soundstage and with surrounded by women. All the there's extras or the makeup and hair girls or who he never ever was without a bunch a gaggle of ladies just wow and you know and what's great about it. It. he deserved it he's just a doll I know because by this point too this is in the in the mid nineties Andreas is um Andreas is a very established actor he's a very handsome man. Yeah. Okay. And, and he's very established. Um, I think I first realized I saw Andreas as a person. I think it was in uh, next of kin with uh, Patrick Swayze. He was the, the mobster and he was all well dressed and well groomed. And then I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this guy in this movie and going, that's your car. I can hear it in the voice, but I'm like, wait a minute, there's yeah. something. And so <laughs> it was, it was really, uh, it's, oh, it's great he's to see dog. that. Mm -hmm. And, and so he had to be fun to work. You know, you had, to, you got to work with so many awesome people yeah. Uh, yeah. on Babylon five and, and sadly, and I, I'll touch on this. I, I, I have my Delenn up because in, in deference to, uh, to Mira, who we just lost, you guys have lost so many friends and cast members since then. Well, we're getting, um, we're getting up there and we're not youngsters anymore. Valid, <laughs> valid. Um, mm. You know, I, I know you guys all still talk a little bit. Do you guys do you guys still talk? Do you reminisce? Do you talk about, you know? Yes, Claudia and Mira, two of my best friends. You know, we are we are we're everybody's very close. It's a close cast. It's really amazing. And after, so, it, yeah. after so many years, is does that closeness surprise you? I mean, you've been in the industry this whole time and does that closeness <laughs> surprise you or is it just something that sort of happened organically and it's, uh, it's there? Oh, it completely happened organically. It's you can't fake that stuff. Uh it it you're about to to eventually make friends right it was a really <laughs> it's a really great cast and and that's right uh, all of you out there even in the geek community we do have friends yes mm -hmm. and, and even pat pat made friends even I, even i have friends that's right that's right and they're not all chickens but so we'll the, get to that after <laughs> yeah. so the book is um most it's around that five years time that i was on the show babylon five from the pilot to the to the end. And in between, I was shooting a lot of Star Trek and uh, I did some of the biggest movies I'd ever done, like St Jurassic Park and Forrest Gump and things like that, because I was doing stunts. Uh, stunts came to me later in life. Uh, it wasn't, I, I started off as an actor and I was acting when I was a teenager. Uh, and I, I, I've loved it and I've been so, so grateful for all of it. Uh, and then Joe's producer and of uh, of his book series came to him and said, "Look, this is great. We've got all the scripts for Babylon Five, but we really need something a little more fan friendly." And he said, "Oh, call Tom." And she was a pain in the ass with her camera on the set. You know, talk to her. <laughs> so uh, I I put together for them this this about. The, their editor came over and picked it like 350 pictures out of my, I had thousands of pictures back in those days. It was just, you know, snapshots. And, uh, and then they said, Oh, would you capture caption? You have to caption all of these. I'm like, Oh, I have to write something. And then they said, okay, now you got to tell the story. Cause that's too good. And so it turned into this, this 
book it's now 370 some odd pages of of photographs that you can't see anywhere else they're all from my camera now, now I, have on the set. I have a question i have a question because i know this is the 2020 update yes of this. So I, more, have, more I, have old, I have the older one is there more in this one is there oh. am i missing stuff yeah you're missing stuff Oh man. Yeah. So yeah. I did. I, I, they, I let the book run out of print and I wasn't, I just, I, I don't know. I, it's hard to describe. I just, people like, why did you put the book back out? I, uh, something was bugging me about it. So my um, Jason Davis, who knows more about Babylon, Babylon 5 than anybody on the planet, uh, was the editor for the B5 books and he edited my first book and he said, come on. And then my designer, Kirk Lamb, who did the cover, he said, come on, let's, we got to put this book back out. So I went back through it painstakingly and I didn't change any of the original stuff. I just added stuff in and I found more pictures. I found my contract that I had to sign for Bester. I had, I found a bunch of stuff that we put in the book. Plus we updated it with um, the reunions, conventions and things like that. And, um, and and it expanded it by about twenty pages or so. Wow. I don't I don't even know how much it was a lot and a so, bunch of several new chapters and right now with that link that Sage is so graciously yep. you, put out are, there are she's been putting it out there this this you get it from me I si I autograph them at home because of COVID I can I can sign them and send them out um, once COVID's over and I'm back on the road traveling with my business it'll just be on Amazon right now if you go to that Amazon link it says two hundred and fifty dollars because I don't want you buying it there <laughs> I want you buying it <laughs> for me for thirty-five dollars. Buy it for me, and then uh, you know, eventually that's you'll all, get. That's, it. I'm I'm so glad you said that because just now I was like, well, now I have to update. So now I need the new copy, and I'm like sitting here going, oh, my Amazon cart. The Amazon's gonna love no, me. No, I would never. There, you have to you have to make the book because I print them from Amazon, so you have to mm -hmm. make it live, and you yes. have to put a price on it. So I priced it as high as I could, so that ah. you won't you don't buy it there. Don't buy it there. Buy it from me. That okay, we're gonna go. Here. We're gonna get ours from Pat because that's. And can yeah. I tell you about one other thing? So I wanted to, yeah, to to create community because we were talking about like like the conventions and how we can't do that right now and how important it is for us to stay connected so we stay sane and we have we have the people that we care about you know kind of around us and it's it's so important as humans to have some friends. You may only need two friends, but you need at least those two friends. So uh, with, with B5 events, that's what we're trying to do. We, we try to create events and there's free aspects to the events as well as paid aspects. So I can keep doing this. That, that I have a Patreon page and the Patreons, uh, different levels get tickets to the events every month. And it works out to be, you know, cheaper to be a patron than it than to buy the ticket every month. So I, I would ask that you go check out patron.com, patreon.com backslash Patricia Tallman and check that out. Just see if that's something that you might want to be a part of. Even the lower levels, we have uh, meditations every Monday together. We have a book club. I do a live stream of all the events that you can access and watch me go batshit crazy while I'm trying to do these events. <laughs> and I tell you what's really going on, like how much they're pissing me off right now and shit like that. Because... <laughs> I'm a redhead and that just is how it goes. And yeah. but it's so it's really been it's been interesting. And I know you've been talking about this too, Gary, is that you get a chance to do these things you would never would have done if it hadn't been for lockdown. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have had the time to do this. You'd be traveling and doing the conventions and you know, creating your shows on the road. But this is this is this has required us to dive deeper into these things. It's really hard. I have to tell you that I never would have done this otherwise. So what we're we're benefiting of like what Garrett's doing is you're getting more time um, with the folks that we're we're doing these events with and yeah, that you, would, that you would, would never get. I would be at a convention maybe this weekend or whatever and and you know Pat would be doing her thing signing or doing whatever and I would be begging for 10 minutes because you're busy and we're yeah. busy and we can't have a really good conversation so I got to get all these questions in in 10 minutes like right. okay so yeah talk about Battle of Five now talk about Star Trek now right. talk about five events it, it's really fast and then it's, this it's gave us so a hard to chat yeah. And yeah. actually get to know, you know, just kind of make a new friend. And yeah. hopefully the folks that are listening in the chat, I, I haven't seen, she hasn't popped up a lot of the chat comments yet. Do we have a lot of questions or anything down there? Because if we do, I don't know. Uh, so 
How about what one? <laughs> Redheads Unite. That's not even Redheads fair. Redheads Unite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, you no. know, I only have one thing to say about the, the redhead thing, guys, is um, I have in my, in my blonde hair, I have red. And I noticed one thing that Pat doesn't seem to suffer from. And it's really getting on my nerves because what? the first thing that happened to me is all of the red hair in my beard turned white. Oh, not like not like gray, like bright white. All the red disappeared and it became white. And so now I have to spend all this money on the hair club for men or whatever they call themselves. <laughs> yeah. my beard. Um, yeah. And you had that beautiful red hair and it's still red. That's so yeah. unfair. <laughs> my Clairol jeans kicked in, you know. What can I, say? <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so I, speaking of your hair. I made an observation and it's a, a very astute artistic mm. observation that is uh, a very I deep observation. Yes. It's a very deep observation. Very I deep. determined that Lita Alexander in Babylon 5 is the antithetical Samson character. You can tell how powerful Lita is by how long her hair is. How funny. So, I, I had first, hair pieces that they would stick on and, and they do this all the time, kids. So even if you've got naturally long hair on a show, they often don't use your own hair. They'll pile your hair up in a hair net in the back and then they'll put pieces on top of that because they can prepare the piece ahead of time and it saves time and it saves your hair from being ruined by all the products and the heat irons and shit. So they'll just put a fall on you with flippy hair or whatever to make it look beautiful and then they take it off <laughs> and put something else on your hair. And my hair length changed one episode to the next. What up? Yeah, yeah. My through the whole hair. season, I know. Next year, I've got this long ponytail. It's like I'm that a first thing we have, hair out of my that head. First, that first thing we have with with Jakar, uh, you know, where you're you're being confronted by Welcome to Babylon Five. Um, <laughs> your very short hair and your right. face is, is is you're very shocked and odd. Now we have one more clip from Babylon Five, and in this one, you can see her. They let her hair grow out a little bit, and now uh, she's. Not She's not so naive anymore. Lita, I understand the Psy Corps is looking for you. I would hate very much for them to find you. I'm not with the Corps anymore. That means I'm not bound by their rules. So if someone were to turn me in, I'd find him. And before they took me, I'd plant a nightmare deep in his mind where no one else could find or remove it. And that person would spend every night for the rest of his life screaming and this is why prepping for this interview i was terrified no <laughs> and i love peter so much to, to say that was the only scene i got with peter in five years well, yeah wow i know i never got to wow. really hang out with peter but wow i love him so much as a person and so to so to be so but he pissed me off so <laughs> that was good. That was that was a, that was a very good tense Fair. scene, guys. I don't have clips from it, but if you want to see when she gets like super uber, she's super power Lita. Uh, check out the later seasons. Again, her hair gets longer, and something goes on in that psycho brain. It just she becomes the the she's the badass. By season five, she's the badass on the show. Yeah, I get to do some weird shit. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. But again, yeah. again, hair length, power, interesting. Uh, Here's one of the here's one of the scenes we have. We have a scene from one of your one of your many uh, Star Trek uh, appearances. And again, see, watch the short hair and then yeah. watch the, watch the mannerisms at the same time. Watch. Hmm. Activate the cloaking device. Cloaking device is functioning within normal parameters. See, um, very 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 down the middle, very almost robotic. Right. You let the hair out. You let, let the hair come out though, and she's done. You're gonna die. You're gonna get right. fried. Your brain is dead. That so. things happen. Yeah, yeah, bad things happen. So, <laughs> so just a fan theory that play with the, the internet can have fun with that because I won't even know what I said in an hour, let alone that I said it. So, uh, I'm with fun. you. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so now you've got B five events running. Um, right. I know we have Gigi coming up on Saturday. Uh, yes. Gigi actually and from Farscape. That's right. Did Gigi send a message in uh, <gasps> to Pat's page? Uh, uh, the, to let you guys all know about it. So here's Gigi talking a little bit about what's coming up this Sunday, this Sunday, Saturday, 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 Saturday. Okay. There. And so here's uh, Gigi Ashley. 
very excited. I'm going to be joining the beautiful Patricia Tallman from Night of the Living Dead, Babylon 5 and Star Trek. And we're going to be joining forces. I'm going to be serenading you with some of my original tunes and I'm going to be showing some awesome fire dancing as well. Cruise on by to B5 events, pick up a ticket, come and share a beautiful, beautiful event with us. It's going to be awesome. It's all about big love because love we. Isn't she the best? Awesome. That is that best. she's 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 absolutely fantastic. We she got is. to see the whole one, guys. Go on over to Pat's page and you'll see all of Gigi's message. Oh my god. So goodness. you she's you can watch the whole thing. And um this will be exciting this weekend. So Yeah. I well this talk here we get to go deep, right? So this is one of those moments where she's talking about uh passion. Her uh, everyone calls her just a love bug because she you could just feel love screaming out of her wherever she goes. So we're going to get a chance to talk about, you know, what is, what, what motivates you, what comes through, what's the passion behind what you're doing? Because obviously with her music and then she fire twirls, obviously as an amazing actress, what, what is passion? How, and, and taking questions from everybody else. Cause so, I think there's a lot of shit out there, but we don't really know what it means for you. How do you use passion? How do you find it? How do you express it? What if people make fun of you for, for, because you want to do this thing over here and everyone thinks you should be that thing over there? How do you, how do you navigate that? It's, so we're going to have some really good conversations around this. That is I'm fantastic. And I know last weekend you guys did the Farscape watch along. All right. We had to that watch was, party. Yeah. So that had to be a lot of fun. It was. It was. I hadn't yeah. seen that episode before. So I'm really glad we did that. I've watched I, a lot of it, but I hadn't seen that one. I saw your your promotional video you know, when you were talking to, to your fan base on your phone. And I saw that and I thought, man, that is uh, that is every if you if you miss out convention season and things like that, you have to check out the stuff that Pat's bringing you on B5 mm. events because that's your dream. You're going to sit. Yeah. You get to sit and watch a movie with somebody you're a fan of and have a conversation about it and, you know, join the chat really super cool. It's interact. It's far more interactive than we, than you could ever going to get when you stand Aww. in line for an autograph because Thank you just, you. Can't, there's not enough time for that. And you're Thanks. actually spending the time, which is awesome. Right. And, Thank it, and I, I think it's important nowadays too. There's so much bad on social media that it's important that we bring out the positive when we can. So that's and, a good point. Honestly, that is such a good point. Why you know, I mean, don't we? Why are we? Why do we waste our times with all the negativity? It doesn't get us anywhere. We might as well. One of the things uh, uh, someone said on social media was, "If you're not using this time in lockdown to get in the best shape of your life, what are you doing?" And I was like, "Oh, that's so good." So you know, to really look at my habits, what am I stuffing in my face? What do I want to change? Do uh, wouldn't it be great when everything opens back up and I go to the gym? I look so badass. Everyone's like, oh, <gasps> it's going to showing up with lockdown weight, you know, and feeling yeah, like it, it is. Michelin it is. Man. <laughs> no, and I think that I I think that can be just as important for uh, getting into mental and emotional shape. Well, absolutely. As well. Because, Absolutely. you know, we, we're, we're, we're on social media and we're browsing our feeds. Right. And hopefully if you're doing it right, you're staying in touch with family and friends and loved ones. You're using the platform for what it was meant for. Um, and, and so, but you have to get your mind right about things because you, you're barraged by so much information so much right. of the time. Get the positive in there when you can do something like B5 right. events where you can actually meet someone that you've always wanted to meet. Maybe you, maybe you've never had the uh, what is it? What was it? The last, the last big convention we went to, they were getting like $250 for the weekend for a ticket. Maybe oh you've never God. had that kind of disposable income and you yeah. wanted to meet these people, but you couldn't do it then. Now's the time. They're Now's out the time. there. They're, you they're don't have to get in a seat. car. You don't even have to put on pants. You can just be there and you're- Now and she you tells get, me. Uh, now she tells me. We're, we're 45 minutes into the interview. I finally found out I didn't have to get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You can, it's, it's a, it's a great, you can look at it in a lot of different ways. So I, I mean, I have really spent time now looking at my bad habits and, and then why, why am I doing that? And, and, is it, and then thinking about what would it take to change a habit and into something a little bit better. So, and we're, and we talk about that in our groups, you know, we're just, let's, let's do something to come out of this better than we were instead of coming out shell-shocked and uh, and out of shape. 
because that's yeah, I mean, that's every, that's fine. I mean, I get it, and we have a good reason for being out of shape. Oh but what yeah, if you know, we we've all, out yeah, we've all been a, shaken to the core. But every crisis right, is an opportunity right. in disguise, and the opportunity that you have right now, folks, is if you're on social media and you're watching the show, stay here, watch the rest of the show, and then send a message to your mom because yes. she probably hasn't heard from you in a while. Oh, and I then love that. I am I'm in touch for the first time in my life via social media with army buddies that I haven't seen in 25 years. Oh my god. And wow. and yet we're all online we're we're all in these online groups where we chat and we 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 reminisce and we tell war stories and we pretend like things happened that never happened and they're <laughs> just a great time. Um, to get in touch with people. This is a fantastic medium. If it's used properly, use it well. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, I think when you're doing something like B5, it's not only a way to make a living, it's a way to use the technology the way it was meant to be used instead of for this nefarious stuff right. that we always read about. So right. I think it's fantastic. Um, we have, well, I have one last clip, and then we're we're gonna take some questions from our chatters. Oh, good. guys! If you guys don't follow Pat's Facebook page, you sh you first of all should because she's a lot of fun and she posts Aww. all the time. Um, it's very casual and it's right. it's very down to earth, which is wonderful. Um, but here's Pat sharing with us a uh, uh, part of her daily rituals when she gets to go outside and spend some time in in nature and with the, <laughs> and with the critters. So here you here here you go. Uh, here's here's Pat's backyard. <laughs> There's we have wild parrots. They're, they're just so fun. Every time they, they come through, this is, they come through in the morning and then in the evening. <laughs> they're hilarious. They just are so loud and cheerful. And they're just, they're, you know, hanging out with each other and just talking and squawking. And that's what you get to look forward to if you go on over and follow Pat <laughs> online because she comes out, you know, once in a in while. My Harry Potter, in my Harry Potter pajamas in my and hair. Yes. And and she just kind of shares with you what's going on in her life. And it's awesome. You get to kind of an inside view. And for those of you who don't didn't realize this, in addition to the parrots that are doing their thing in the tree line, um, she, Pat has chickens and they were getting into it. They were, there was a dialogue happening. Uh, if we had <laughs> subtitles, maybe we would know what they said, but we don't. So. Uh, I loved how you picked that up and you mentioned it. You're like, oh, the chickens were getting into it. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they I, was absolutely right. I, I just at one point I could I remember as the as the clip was ending, I was uh, we were at the we were over in the editing suite there, and this clip was ending. I heard the chickens start climbing up, and I was wow. like, wait a minute, <laughs> they don't even know what's being said. It's a whole other language. It's like Chinese people speaking to Korean people. I wasn't sure, but <laughs> they knew what was happening. They knew. It's they close did. enough. Um, so, guys in the chat, if you guys have questions, do you guys have? Oh, there we go. What uh, does? Pat should say, oh, there we go. It says, I solemnly swear I am up to no good. Yes, it's I have. Bothering. It's been have, bothering her the whole time that she's been watching the show. She's uh, like, what is I, it I have uh, Harry Potter pajamas, and this is a, a Harry Potter sweatshirt. That is, so, I love the little footprints over the shoulder. That's nerd. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Wow. What? what is wrong with you? What? She's, what? She's, she's, oh no, I am going to share that because the internet deserves to know. And and Sage said when you said Harry Potter, for some reason her brain, Harry Potter pajamas, she swore for a minute you said you had a Harry bottom. And I was like, I don't even know where does your brain go when we're well, that doing says this. a lot, doesn't it? Right there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's some you got We'll have to work some things out after off camera. New I question. Babylon 5, B5 no. cosplayers are very talented. Have you oh, yes. ever had a chance uh, to trade makeup and costume secrets with a fan? Or maybe, have you ever have you ever run into a Lita oh. cosplayer? Yes, I have. I have definitely. Oh, wow. um, it, 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 it's quite remarkable. Uh, uh, because my makeup is pretty normal. I don't, I haven't really chatted with, and, and definitely cosplayers know so much more about costuming than I do. <laughs> because they have to make them. I just put them on, right? I just, I don't even have to think about it. They, they, they tell me what to wear. I have no choice, but the, it, it, it's you know, a remarkable cosplayers, gift. Oh my God. I belong to a cosplay group just because I love cosplay. Not that I do it, but I just love it. And so I, I really have so much admiration for cosplayers. It, it, it is what I, I, um, I, I actually, when we first started doing a convention circuit, I'm not a cosplayer and, and I'm barely a performer. I can barely be a journalist. So uh, I had the most <laughs> admiration for the people who had that kind of talent. But then our little guy, uh, 
started hanging out with adult cosplayers and became a cosplayer himself. Um, he is right now, I guess, I guess he's listed as the, the United States youngest professional cosplayer. Uh, at, wow. 10 years old, at 10 years old, he sells prints at conventions and things like that. And, um, <laughs> and this is, I, I, I'm going to show, I love showing, I, I love showing off Michael. So I can do this. Yes, this of course, is, show him off. This painting on the wall is a, an, a local <gasps> artist rendition of Cosplay Michael's Joker. That's wow. our son, Cosplay Michael. And uh, that's his Joker cosplay. And uh, wow. so, you know, and, and that's all something he, he helps us to thrift and build and teaches me how to have skills that I had, don't have for real. I have to, you know, I, I spend all my time on YouTube. How do you sew? Right. I, you know, typing in searches like that. So, right. um, but it's a remarkable uh, gift. So does Pat talk to her chickens? <laughs> yes, of course. There I do. Are. I, I talk to them both in English and sometimes, yes, I do cluck at them because they, I, I just imitate what they say. They, the chickens have a, a massive variety of a vocabulary. It's, it's funny that, that to think of that, but they do, they have, they have all kinds of noises that they make. It's very funny. And I've gotten wow. to distinguish what a lot of it means. Not all of it, but a lot of it. I had a friend yeah. many years ago, I was a mentor actually, when I was uh, working with my dad and he, um, he had decided that he was buying chickens, that he was getting chickens because he was tired of the price of eggs. Now, this mm. is, by the way, guys, this is like 30 years ago. So um, it wasn't that high, but he was tired of buying eggs and paying the price of eggs. So he got himself some chickens and he came to work one day and we were in the office and he came in and he announced he was so proud of himself because he had now gotten a dozen eggs down to $23 a dozen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said it was very expensive to feed the chickens and to have all the chickens. He yeah. said so. He said I finally did the math. He goes, I got, a, I got a, I got a dozen eggs down to twenty three dollars, and I went. That's pretty funny. Yeah. You gave them a hustle, man. You, you really gave them a hustle at Publix. So, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, it's, it's just like trying to grow anything yourself, you guys. I'm, I'm sure some of you are really good at it and have green thumbs. But when I try to grow my own stuff because I'm here in California. It um it takes so much water and it takes so much attention. And then the bugs get it or the chickens get it. Or you know, it's <laughs> I, I just would rather go pay a thousand dollars to the farmer's market because it's just there, there you go. It is it is something. So guys, we have to wrap it up here. We've been hanging out with Pat for about an hour. Uh as we do that, go ahead, Dean and get ready. We're gonna go ahead and, and wrap the show up here. As we do that, we want to say thank you to our partners and our friends. We want to say thank you to our friends over Thanks, at Famous Faces everybody. and Funnies. Um, thank you to NSC Live TV and Embellish Effects Orlando, Florida. Thank you to HarleyCon and Harlequin Arts Cosplay and Crafts. Thanks to Josh Bauer at J. Bauer Art for all the art that's on our set. Uh, thank you very much to the Threadless Merchandise Shops for all the merch that goes to all of the shows here around HWWS. And um, go ahead and yep, you were done with that. Go ahead. Nope. 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 I don't care about that, but okay, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us here on the hanging with web show. We've been hanging thank out you. with actress Patricia Tallman. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, Pat. Thank uh, you. Guys, thank remember, you for me. Log on, tune in and see who we're hanging with next. Yeah. <laughs>